Hi, and welcome to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen. Today I've decided it's a soupy day. Uh, actually, I'm going to make bisque. Bisque is a soup, but it's a soup that's made with a roux. And because I have a tremendous amount of tomatoes, <laughs> to say the least, I've got to do something with them. I've decided I'm going to make a smoky tomato bisque. But when you're making that, you can also make a beautiful shrimp bisque. So I'm going to show how you can make the roux and actually have that same roux that you're going to use for both of the soups. And that kind of saves a lot of work. And when you have this many tomatoes, you're kind of preserving when you make this much. If you look, I've got an awful lot of large pots and things around because if I'm going to make the mess of doing all this, well, I want to make sure I have some in my freezer because there's nothing better than when you have a busy day than to be able to go in there and pull it out. When you're making a smoky tomato bisque, you have to have a ham stock. So this is the ham stock. I've started with it. Now I'm going to add a couple of things to it. I'm going to turn it on. I started because it needed to have a good, the bone needed to be cooked off. But what I do add to it, and I wanted you to see that so that you can remember to do that, is I always put in a little bit of bay leaf. It's bay leaf. Bay leaf is important because it gives a little bit of an earthy flavor. Now these are broken bay leaves, which is good because the flavor will come out. If you have a whole bay leaf, you're going to want to take it and crack it because it won't otherwise pull the flavor out. So you just need a couple. I got three in there. I'm also going to put a few peppercorns in. See, because I'm going to strain this, this stock off. So here's the peppercorns. I've got red and black. I find that's a wonderful kind of combination of flavors. And you need about a, a good teaspoon, I would say, and put it into that stock, because don't forget, this is a fairly large batch of soup. So I'm just going to bring that to boil and let it simmer for a while. I'm just going to remove this pot because it's just in the way for now. I'm going to keep that one simmering. And then I'm going to show you what I've got started over here. You also need a beautiful seafood stock for the shrimp bisque. So you're going to see I've got a start on it. What I've got in here is some tomato paste. And I have shelled off the shrimp. You see, I have the shrimp going on here. Nice small shrimp. Because I want to be able to flambe those to do the final service. So what you've got is all the shells. And <laughs> it may seem weird to a lot of people because they're going to say, well, uh, shells, but they've been washed and everything. Here's all the shells. I had some frozen and I have also the new ones that I just shelled. I'm going to add them to the stock. To need a little bit of a spoon. I got my music on this morning in the background. Just makes me feel light of heart. I uh, have always, as long as I've known myself to do, worked with music. I never knew that I was destined to play music. I'm just going to put the rest of that in there. Now I'm going to bring that to boil again too. But I'm going to put it in the back burner. So you saw now what, what it looks like. It looks terrible. It doesn't look like anything. But you wait. It's going to be awesome. So I'm going to turn that on. That's the back burner. Bring it to boil and let it simmer. This one's simmering away. I'm going to turn it right down. And while things are simmering, I've got to get another pan out here. That's one I've got sitting to the side. And get it ready to make the roux. I need to get this one strained off before too long because I need to add all the tomatoes. Because the reason it's a smoky tomato bisque is you can take the tomatoes, 
You can also um, put them on a barbecue and you can get a real smoky flavor on the tomatoes, but you can also just put them into the smoky stock. Now that makes more sense, so that's what I'm doing. And I have a vegetable sieve that I didn't take down from here and I'm always a little too short. <laughs> but that's what's going to help me to strain out all of the seeds and everything that I have to do from the from the stock after I have it all cooking. So now the first thing I've got to do is get over on this side. I have some onions from my garden and of course garlic. Because in order to make this roux, I need onions and garlic. Very important ingredients. I can put the pepper back. I think that one of the hardiest comfort foods there is, is soup. You might think, wow, all this work when you're making stock. But you know, if you just bake a ham, even for Thanksgiving or it doesn't matter, or just because you have a large family or just because you want to bake a ham, you get one that has a bone in it, you just freeze the bone or you make the stock right away and you use some of the drippings from the ham, not too much, because if you do that, it's going to get too salty. So I'm peeling up the garlic at the moment here because it's important. I don't know if I showed you this on another show or not, but I'm going to repeat myself just in case you missed the show. It's important when you have the garlic that you cut it in half like this and you're going to notice a little heart, kind of a heart in here. See this green heart? It's got to come out. It's bitter and nobody wants bitter in their soup. I like that. I love making soup. I uh, probably excel at making soup. When I was in chef school, that was my 100 mark. I got 100 in soup making. Oh, what? I got another one here I want to throw away. Why? I got BB King in the background. Love BB King. I have very few dislikes when it comes to music, and I guess that's where I have come upon my style of music. It's just after many years, I won't say how many years, of listening to music and playing music, you develop a style that becomes your own, but really all it is is bits and pieces of all your favorite people. Should have worn a short sleeve top. I can see myself fighting with this. So the stock is simmering away over there, and that's awesome. I'm just going to take these peels and put them away right away. And you can dice up the garlic, but I also have a, a garlic chapa. Now, onion, very important. Make sure you got the tough skin off. One day I was cooking and I left a bit of tough skin on it and I thought there was some plastic in my food. But there wasn't. It was just tough skin because the onions we grow. Again, I want to show this is a knife skill. How you cut to make a fine dice because I want this to be a fine dice. Keep those fingers away. Very important to have a knuckle against the blade. And you get a beautiful fine dice and it happens in quite a hurry. Now I'm going to take these end chunks sooner than dicing them fine. I'm just going to chop it like this and I'm going to throw it into the stock. Why not? Stock is uh, something that you can, you can throw celery in there if you wanted to, but be careful with celery. If you're making a savory soup like something with chicken or turkey, celery works better. But for this sort of soup, there's already a real bite with the tomatoes, so you don't want to have too much bitter. And that's a bit bitter. Onion is sweet though, so it can actually, sounds funny to say that onions are sweet, but onions are sweet. Okay, now I'm going to throw a little bit of this onion into this stock. You don't have to have a lot of onion in your stock simply because I'm going to have onion in the roux and that's why I'm dicing onion right now. Something going on outside, I hear noises, but I guess combining is still happening. It is fall, and I am saying that I'm making fall soups, but it doesn't matter. 
when you have soup around. I have soup in the middle of the summer. I have soup in the middle of winter. I find soup a great starter even in a small cup so that when you're making a main meal with it, it's a wonderful comfort to start your meal with. You can do a soup or a salad. I never do soup and salad. I do soup or salad. So it sort of depends on the weather. It depends on your guests. It depends on how you feel. I'm not crying yet, but it's coming. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay, so I've got my garlic and my onions prepared. And I'm going to throw these last chunks of onion in there. It has to be on a little bit higher in order to get that really to simmer. I'm going to put the lid on a little bit like this and put on a, a very light fan. I'm going to have to put the fan on louder later because I'm going to be making a roux and then that's, and there's garlic and there's onions and so there's quite a few different flavors and smells going on. I'm going to stick the onions to the back. I purposely peeled a few extra because I never know quite how many I'm going to need. I'm just going to take the uh, garlic here and squash it right into the onion so it becomes one, one thing. And it doesn't matter, like, you, I'm going to show you something that's probably unorthodox, but I do it, especially for soups, because it's all going to get blended. So you see, some of the larger pieces came out of here. It doesn't matter. See? like that. And I just put it in. It doesn't matter because I'm going to blend it with a stem blender at the end so it's nice and smooth and creamy. And I have soapy water back here so that I can always keep kind of cleaning behind myself. Now I'm going to start with getting a roux start uh, going simply because I'm waiting for the stock. Oh my goodness, I almost have to turn my music up. I don't hear any anymore. That'll never do. So I'm going to take about a half a cup of butter because it's a large soup, like I said. I'm going to put it over here in the pan. And turn it on low just to get the melt on, going on it. And as I can see, all the stock is happening. So I can turn that right down. And I'm going to need also quite a bit of flour for this one because, because don't forget I'm making it for two soups. Ah, I hear a nice fun song playing right now. I want to hear that song, shut the fan off till I'm frying. <laughs> I think everybody knows it these days, Despacito. I'm going to move this over here. Can you see? Looks great. I'm just going to turn the butter down so it doesn't get too hot too fast. Strain it off. I'm going to use the same pot. Nice pots. This is definitely a soup pot. So, nice clear stock going on here. Going to pour it back into the pot. You'll see why in a moment. And I'm going to keep it on low. And now I have to get going with the tomatoes. Before I start the roux, the ham and the bits and pieces are good for nothing, unless you have a dog. And I don't. They love ham bones. But what I do need to do, and I'll put this here for now. Move a few things to the side because 
I need to bring my major bowl of tomatoes. I have to be strong. Something about the, the Latin style music is like, woo. I should be making salsa. Oh, that's another idea. I think I'll do that on the next show. Chili, salsa, all kinds of spicy food. I know. Look at some of these tomatoes. Whoa, that one unfortunately is not happy. Garden tomatoes. I'm going to need a lot of them, as you can see. So I'm picking some of the nicest ones. And it's just going to be a rough chop, so it's going to be easy, but I've got to rinse them off. Okay, now I'm going to just run a strainer over this. Okay, just let it drip off for a minute. You see there's a lot of, oh, it smells great. Ah, I forgot to tell you one of the ingredients. You know, I'm one of those people that forgets to tell you all the ingredients so your recipe doesn't turn out exactly. That's not cool. I'm going to take this over here too, just so I avoid any spillage. I want the stalks to be ready, otherwise I can't progress with the soups. So, Again, all of these shrimp shells and the onions and there was a little bit of um, tomato paste in there and also a couple of whole tomatoes. Oh. I have to go fishing now for one shell because I put it in the wrong place. Go fish! shell in there. Okay, so that's going to sit to the side. And just wait for me until I have the roux ready. And again, I'm going to just discard the shells. Now, you've had your quick lesson in making stalks. Without, I was going to explain that too. Without the stalks, your homemade stocks, you'll, you can end up with an extremely salty soup. And you can buy all kinds of bouillons. And there's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of bouillon to some of the things that you're making. But if you just use bouillon, you're going to end up with extremely salty soup, and that's going to spoil the flavor. Okay, now I'm going to quickly get the tomato into this one because otherwise we're going to be too late with it. Just take the stems out. You don't have to worry about nothing much. Just a quick chop. Take the stems out. Sometimes when they're wet they don't want to come out so easy and yet they're very ripe. So you take all the stems out. It doesn't take long for these to cook up in the soup stock, which is very hot, as you can see, cooking on there. It's easier to cut the stem out. These little curved knives work very well for that, too. Now, I have enough tomato in the shrimp stock. I don't have to do this part, but this is going to be a very tomato-y, tomato-y, tomato -y type stock. Turn it up so it comes to boil. Only has to simmer for about 10 minutes just to cook up the, the tomatoes. I'm 
just going to de-stem all these things and I could just easier chop them on a board. I'm doing it by hand like this, it's the old fashioned way. My mom was probably the best tomato grower ever. My mom and dad had a lodge, a very large, in fact the largest hog farm, I should say we, the family, in Saskatchewan. And they also won the Master Family Farm Award in 1967. I think, yeah, 67. And one of the things that drew such great attention from uh, the judges was her amazing tomatoes. Like these are tiny. Hers were like oh, as big as the hand. It was fabulous. And we made tomato everything. Tomato ketchup, tomato soups, and they were all canned, you know, for future, for the winter. So I guess we learned from young how to, how to do all of that. Everybody asks, well, why does she have such beautiful tomatoes? <laughs> well, that's easy. Pig manure. <laughs> Good, natural, down-to-earth fertilizer. Yeah, yeah, this is much simpler, see? Just take a board, cut them up. Just had to get all the stems out. Yeah. We grew a huge garden. I did, too. I like growing garden. And so, yes, these tomatoes are some, some from my garden, but some from my sister's. We always trade. Seems like one of us has more squash, one has more tomatoes, one has more carrots. But my garden isn't that large, so I do the best I can with the amount of space I've got. Yeah, I'm just going to take it with the cutting board over there. Get that in there. Try not to splash too much. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, you just make more of a mess, so I'm not in a hurry. I've said many times on my show, and I'll say it again, you better enjoy what you're doing when you do something like this, or else you can just go buy a can of soup and call it good. But when you have a taste of your homemade soup, you'll never go back to a can. This could be a curse and a blessing, I'm not sure. Again, more tomato. As you know, there's lots of tomato. Very important. And you're going to see me add something to the roux as well that makes it a very rich tomato base. Just going to quickly rinse this off because I think I'm going to be kneading it again. Yeah, it's just tomatoes. I'm just going to set it up and be ready. Now I can get started on the roux because everything's in order and in place. Set a few things to the side. Ow, that's hot. I was going to handle the uh, the stock, but the pot is mighty hot. I'm going to set it over here so it's ready. Okay, what's next? This is what I was talking about. This is going full bore. I've got the butter already melted. And I'm going to put it on pretty much on medium. And take my onions and garlic that I had over here, and I set flour over here. And I'm going to take my magic wand here. This is my magic wand. <laughs> I sing with it. I do everything. I cook with it. So now I'm going to take the flour. Actually, not yet. I gotta bring this back to heat. And then, I'm going to add first, on this particular one, the garlic and onions. So that they sort of, I'm gonna have to put the pan on now because it's going to get, they got a bit, I guess I call sweating them. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So you see what I'm doing? I've got the butter in there. Because I want these flavors in the bisques. That's why it wasn't important to put so much onion or garlic in the stock. This one's doing beautifully. When I'm done 
getting that to sweat a little bit, then I'm going to add the flour. Then I'm going to have to, I'm going to do the, the, this bisque first, I think, because I've got that ready to go. I'll show you what I'll do. I'm going to be separating the roux in two pans. I can smell all these smells. I'm hoping you can smell all these smells. I guess not until you start making it yourself. It's almost ready. You don't want to caramelize. I don't want to caramelize the onions because it would just give a different texture altogether and it wouldn't blend up right. Um, when you're caramelizing the onions, it gives it a particular flavor and it pulls out an extra amount of sweetness. So it's just another little tidbit. So I think it's just about ready. Now I'm going to add the flour. Important part of making a roux. Now you're going to use this exact same roux when you're making the smoky tomato soup. It's uh, just that I'm going to do it separately because it's going to be easier for me to do it in one pot. I was going to separate it, but I think I'm going to need this from the amount of stock that I've got. I'm going to need this whole roux. Now watch me. I put the flour in. I have to take it off the heat for a minute like this. See, it starts to cook a little bit on the bottom. That's what you want. See how it's just getting a little bit stuck on the bottom? So you take it off, and then you work it around to get that roux perfect. You don't want a brown roux, but you want to know that it's roasting. It's called roasting off the roux. I should just set this to the side for the moment because I'm not going to need it just yet. I'm going to put it back on here for a minute. And that's what you have to do. You have to roast it off for a few minutes. Ah, I hear Colin James in the background. Colin James is probably my favorite Canadian artist. Of all things, I don't know if it was two years ago or three years, I think it was two years ago. I got to see him in Yorkton live, front and center. He was playing, um, presenting his new album, and it was like an up close and personal. I think there's only about 140, 170 people there. So I was very happy to say that my sister contacted me to let me know that it was happening. OK, so you see what's happening here? Now I'm going to add a touch of tomato paste that I've got going on. It'll just give me more color. It doesn't really mess with the flavor too much. And I've already got tomatoes in the uh, stock. But this is going to make a big difference. So I'm going to turn it right down to simmer. So and this one's boiling like crazy, which is awesome, because I need it to. And I don't put lids on, you might notice. When you're making stock, sometimes there's a skim, a scum that you want to skim off of there. Can't even talk. First day with my new lips. <laughs> so this is roasting off beautifully. And so you see, you just get a nice kind of color to it. Very important. Now, this is going to be done. So I'm going to take it off of the burner. And I'm going to move this over here, because the burner's hot. When you're adding the stock, I'm going to want to do a whisking, because you're going to want to go like this. You know, make sure it's good. You take it off of the heat. And it's going to become very pasty very fast. 
that one's going to be cooled down pretty fast. Whoops. Good catch. So you're just going to add about three cups or scoops. Oh, maybe I'll make it four to start. This is going to turn into a paste really fast. I think I'm singeing the hairs off of my arm right now. I'm just going to move over here because it's too hot. And I've got some hot pot setters here to work with. And then I'll be going back to the burner after. It's just too hot. Not that I can't take the heat. I mean, if you can't take the heat, I guess you got to get out of the kitchen, huh? I'm just going to let this sit here because the burner is really hot yet. OK, I'm going to move a few things around like this and like this. Seeing as So now I'm going to add a little bit more. And then you just keep. to stir, keep stirring and whisking. And you see it's quite pasty right now. And this is important that I get this happening because it has to actually take its time to, to cook because there's flour in it. So I'm going to want that on the burner because I want to serve that for lunch. So it's going to need a minimum of a half an hour to uh, cook off the flour. So when I'm making the roux and the bisque for the uh, tomato soup, well, that's okay because that one can be for supper. Okay, now I can add more faster, but I had to make sure that the paste was going to be nice and smooth. Now I can go back to the burner and turn it back on. See the beautiful, almost caramely color we're getting here? Just enough tomato, the smell is wonderful. One of the things I usually put into this bisque as well is just a little bit of Madeira or Marsala. There you go, that's got to go all in there. And once this is all nicely happening and brought to a boil, I can turn it down, I can just set it to the side and I can ignore it. Because like I said, well, not completely ignore it, I have to give it a stir once in a while. So I'm letting that come to a boil. And pretty soon I can handle the tomato stock. I'm gonna set it over here because it's hot. Again, hot. <laughs> <laughs> Something tells me I like heat and I like the kitchen. Okay, just gonna wipe off the edge of that pot for a minute. Try to do things a little bit neat. Now, I don't like to leave the whisk in the pot, so I'm going to rest it on a bowl on the side. Then I'm going to go about very quickly to show you how we strain out the stock and make an actual stock for the smoky tomato soup. Okay, so this is going to be fine. I'm going to bring it down to a simmer and let it go and just come back for a stir every now and then. All right. I can shut that fan off again for a minute so I don't have so much competition. Okay. This was the bowl that I had just strained out the stock in. Hmm. I'm doing things backwards to myself. This is hot, so I gotta be careful what I'm doing. Always be a little careful. You don't want to be burning yourself. Burning and cutting yourself is a silly thing to do. It's like running out of gas with a car. Silliest car trouble is running out of gas. Did you know that? Well, when you've learned how to work in a kitchen, the silliest thing is to burn yourself or cut yourself. Yeah, this is going quite well. I can just probably ignore it now for a little while. But I gotta keep it on a low burn. Simmer. Okay. 
You saw me take this out. Everybody should own one of these. It's a veg. It's called a vegetable and fruit sieve. Now, my mom and dad used to have one was a cone, and it had funny looking legs. It looked like something like a spaceship, I think, and it had um, a, a kind of a a wooden thing that you rolled around in it. I think I have one of those somewhere. I, I think I do yet. I was doing a, a kind of a clearance sale this week. It was a little bit crazy. And I found all kinds of treasures. You know what's the problem with that? Now you have to get rid of it and you can't because it's treasures. So if you see what I'm doing, here I got this smoky, very smoky, smells great. You see, it's got tomatoes, 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 and all that stock. But now you have to strain this out because again, I have to make a roux. And this is just easier because it's really hot. Normally I let it chill down, but then I'll never get it finished, right? So it just, just like that. And you're going to get all the goodness and all of the skins and like onion pieces and <laughs> seeds stay behind. But everything else goes through and you get this honest, true stock. I've not added salt to any of this, by the way. I don't like adding salt, especially to this one, because it's got ham stock. And as it is, I only use, I would say, about... Uh, for a batch like this, six tablespoons maybe of the gelled stock that is left behind with the ham and you chill it and you take all the fat off. So there's no fat. Again, I do this in kind of intervals like this. I'll show you what I got left when I'm done straining it out. And so you have a good idea of the look of it. See, now I can pour. keep going with this and when you think it's not coming through well enough you just go backwards like this I'm going to show you what I got inside there see there's nothing except seeds and skins and you get a pure clear stock going on. Beautiful. Nice. Ah, smells. Smells beautifully smoky. I have a little bit more in here and I'll just use it up. You're in the mess of it anyway, right? going to go about making another roux pretty quick right here. Oh, my pot's getting, bowl's really getting full. The other thing that's fun about this uh, soup is it's, you can you finish it with a little bit of the chunks of ham that you have left over as well and with bits and pieces of maybe some bacon. I'll show you the finishing part is fun. Again, here's the there's so little, there's so little waste, it's not even funny. I'll just take the, uh, it just releases like this. There's the waste. It's like crazy. Okay, so I'm going to put that to the side, obviously. That is waste, and we do not need it. But now I have to get the other roux happening. And I got to do a stir on this one. going to set this to the side, but very gingerly. Because it's mighty hot. Mighty hot. But there's rubber on the bottom of the bowl, if you'll notice. And that keeps it from uh, being too hot on the cupboard. All kinds of wonderful uh, um, inventions these days. I need some more butter.
Now, if you've already seen me make the roux, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, make it again. And then I will be adding the stock to it. This is looking really good. And I'm going to use my, I don't like, this one was a metal, metal pan, so I don't want to use um, any kind of, uh, and the other one's enamel, so I definitely do not want to use anything metal on there. That would not be very nice. So, gonna need some more flour. Uh, this. Now I've got enough onion to dice and throw in there, and as well as I'm gonna put some garlic. I got buddy guy playing now, I tell you. But when I'm making this, um, when I'm making the roux and getting ready to do the next thing, I'm just going to shut down my background music and uh, let you all listen to a song that's off of our new album called Life's Kaleidoscope that we're out doing shows with this whole month of October. We've got a lot of shows going on. Well, and December, I guess all year. That's okay. I like it. And the song is a very country song. It's called uh, Something on Your Mind. So the moment I start putting the fan on here and frying and making all kinds of noise, I'm going to have you listen to that tune. Are you ready to listen to that tune? Something on Your Mind. It's a, it's a fun tune that I guess I was thinking about because a lot of times as we get a little older, or we've been married more than 20 years, we take each other for granted. And uh, we should never do that. And then every once in a while, just when you think that person is taking you for granted, you get this, he gets that look in his eye. Well, that's what the, that's what the song is all about. Sometimes I feel like you don't care Sometimes you look through me like I'm not there We've been together for so long But taking that for granted, well, you know that's wrong But then you smile and a wink at me I like something in your eye From that crooked smile, my guess is you've got some Something in the way you're walking, walking tall. Something in the way you're smiling, for no good reason at all. Something in the way you're looking at me, and it makes me come unglued. Something in your touch, and it feels brand new. I know there's nothing in your eye, but there sure is something on Good little smile I could never stay mad at you more than just a while thought I knew you inside out thought I could read your mind without a doubt but then you smile and wink at me like something in your eyes from that crooked smile my guess is you've got something
on the Rue. I feel like the Rue Queen from Saskatchewan. I was gonna say New Orleans, but. Yes, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm creating. Doesn't look like much, but believe me, it's awesome. Now, I have to take it off the burner again, just to get the stock put in there just for the start, and it's hot stock, so I have to be careful with it. I don't want the children to try this at home. I'm putting it on hot pot holders, like the special rosy pot holders. <laughs> Sounds silly, but yeah. So you just do it again with a start like that, so you just get the whole, you know, thing pulled together. You gotta pull it together somehow. And that's what you have to do. Now I can just pour some more in. And now I can get it back on the burner and get going with the roux because it has to cook off. Whoa, just about lost that in there. Well, I hope you enjoyed the song. It's one of the songs off the new album. I should be playing something off of the old album, too. I've got actually seven albums all together, including a Christmas album. But uh, the latest one is Life's Kaleidoscope. The one before that was Winds of Change. And we also did a Latin kind of Spanish one where Jack played a lot, my husband played a lot of the instrumentals on it. And uh, I think I did five or six tunes, and I had to take my own original tunes and then develop them into uh, Spanish. It was the hardest thing I ever did. But I was thinking very much of Elise as I was cooking here because we went, I should explain that, we recorded the Latin Spanish album after we came home from Cali, Colombia, when we went on a special mission there for a cultural uh, cl a cultural center. They were teaching children how to love and live off the land. And the missionary and his wife, Eduardo and Elise, they took great care of us. It was unbelievable, you know, because this was the most poverty-stricken area of Colombia. So it was bizarre to see what they did for us and what the people would have given us. We came home with a changed mind and a changed direction in life. We were living out in, near Calgary in Okotoks. Anyway, Elise made the nicest soups and she wanted desperately, when she learned that I had a catering company, she said, could I come and work for you? But it was, the timing was just crazy because that's when I was going to be moving over here shortly. Well, we had bought the property. We didn't even know we were moving, but she got a hold of me later and that's when that subject came up. And I couldn't offer her the job. But the good thing was that they actually uh, got her to get to culinary school. And uh, he went back to administrating as a doctor as well. But he still, they still volunteer for the mission. Anyway, we came back and we wrote this song called Life's Kaleidoscope. And it's on our Rose and Jose incognito album, so I'd like you to listen to that while I'm puttering around here finishing up a few things. When I was 
was a child I received a very special toy A kaleidoscope with a wish For each twist and turn to bring me joy Each twist of the wrist Kept me amused for hours Watching flowers turn to diamonds and diamonds back into flowers Then with the slightest of hand all those stones came tumbling down As I I'm adding a bit of marsala just like vanilla to the soup I will need it also for flambe like the stones the world turns upside down and that's life not always kind not always as you hoped the alteration of life in all its scope is just one turn in life's kaleidoscope ring around as you can see, it's all happening, including my whisk falling in. Well, that pan's just a little too big for that. Now for the finishing. I've got the smoky tomato bisque sitting over here. If everybody can see it. I've got my, as you can see, it's done a few jobs before because it's got some color to it. I've got my burner heating because I'm gonna have to flambe some shrimps up. But you could have it in here because I have added a little bit of cream cheese in there. I'm also going to add just a touch of blue cheese. And when I say a touch, it's everybody's taste. And then you got to do this because now look at the creamy, creamy soup we're getting. A stem blender is a good way to do it. You can put it in a regular blender, but yeah, you've got to be careful because the lid can pop off. So these are quite available anywhere. And as you can see, that's quite nice. Now I'm just going to throw a couple leaves of basil in there because it needs that finishing touch and that flavor. You never put fresh herbs in until the end. Nice. Okay, see my butter is ready. This is ready. So I'm going to throw my shrimp in here. This is a very important finishing touch to the shrimp bisque. As you can see, it's ready. And this is Shrimp, you never want to cook too, too long, or it's going to get very, you know, rubbery very fast. Now, what smells better than, I gotta find my, oh, here it is. Butter, and garlic, and shrimp. Well, you have to add just a little bit of marsala. And then you get that whole flavor going on. Oh, it smells amazing. And all you do is just flip them around like this because you don't need them to overcook because they're going to go into the hot soup too yet. So now I've got to take a little bit of marsala. I'm glad for an apron because I just keep wiping my hands on my apron. Because the finishing is something you got to do pretty quickly in order to get it to taste right. So I got about half an ounce in here. And it's cooking away. I want the garlic to be cooked though. And I'm gonna set out some bowls right away. Now oh, you ready for it? We're flambeing. Woohoo! Yes! I love that part. <laughs> and I have the fan on this time. So I just let it cook for just seconds. And I'm going to get this a bowl of soup ready to show you how you serve this very quickly. I am looking for my scoopa. It seems to have disappeared on me, but it has to be here. Oh, here it is. Very important. I've got to take that off the heat right away. Now, the thing about gas heat is you just shut it off like that and it's done. You take, always when you're scooping the soup and you do this, you, you lift it up and you dip it down, and that keeps it from dripping. Okay, so there you go. Now I'm going to take some of the shrimp. 
Oh, we've got to add one ingredient to the shrimp. That's very important. It's the cream. I'm going to set it over here. You're going to see both of them served right. You've got to add a little cream to this and while it's hot. Because that's got to go into the soup because the soup hasn't got any in there yet. And then you just add it with a little bit of herbs for service. Like that. You need that cream in there. You need the shrimp in there. It's beautiful. And you dribble it around a little bit just for, to make it look beautiful. I'm just doing the one for now because I want you to see how it's done. And I like putting a little, this is a herb keeper, I like putting a little bit of cilantro in that one because I just think it looks beautiful to have a little green in there. So there is your shrimp bisque soup. See how beautiful it looks? You can also put a little bit of cracked pepper in there. But I'll do that after because I want to also serve a bowl of the, I gotta wash the spoon out quickly, of the tomato soup. I wanna show you what you do with that one. It's very important that you know how to serve that one. So you take, again, scoops like this, put it in there. There's a major finish to this one. Just a couple scoops. Now you're gonna sprinkle in just a wee, 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 wee bit of cream. It's just for looks like that. You're going to put bacon crumbles and you're going to put a few chopped, chopped ham in there and just a little bit of blue cheese and there you go. And there is your smoky tomato bisque. They almost look the same but there's absolutely nothing the same about them. You throw a little bit of cracked pepper on it. You can take these major dishes like this and freeze them. Do not put the shrimp into the shrimp bisque and freeze it. That's why you finish it off that way. I want to thank everybody for coming and hanging out with me today at Sammy's Cottage Kitchen and watching me bisque it. <laughs> not biscuits, but bisque it. So just keep on keeping on. And please come back and tune in to Sammy's Cottage Kitchen next week at, uh, on Monday at 7 o'clock and uh, I'll have something else cooking. And next week, and the week after, please join me. Till then, keep on keeping on and cook your heart out. <laughs>